It is everybody's obligation to put back into the earth at least what you took out. Those words by Albert Einstein were to have a profound effect on my life. As a young child, I always enjoyed tinkering, taking thing, things apart to figure out how they worked. But my wise grandmother would never allow me to dismantle her sewing machine, which she still pedals to, to powder it up. I went on to study electrical engineering and then took up a career in construction project management, particularly in the fields of mining, petrochemical, water, air treatment plants, and bottle recycling plants. While working, I saw how much we consume, extract, and waste. So I had that Einstein moment and decided to change careers. I now follow a path in food gardens and low-tech sustainable technology. And I'm gonna share with you some of those low-tech solutions. While I was still working, I did a lot of traveling from one side to the other. And I was fascinated about waste vegetable oil conversion. So I needed a diesel car. Got rid of my petrol car, bought an old diesel van, and decided to do the conversion myself because the motor mechanic wanted too much money. So it consists of two tanks, a smaller tank in the back bin, which has got diesel, so you start up for the engine to get hot. Once it's hot, you then switch over to the vegetable oil. I've done about 140,000 kilometers on the system, and it's been six years. Use the older type vehicles, diesels, not the new types. <laughs> and that's the switch inside the dashboard. <laughs> It's work. You've got to go and collect the vegetable oil. Sometimes I get it for free. Sometimes I have to pay for it. And you filter it through a five micron filter sock. And sometimes there's disasters in the garage floor from the spillage. And that's me filling you up. Next, now with the transport sorted out, it was the cooking. I came across an old picture frame. And this was going to be my lid for my solar oven. I got some old masonite board, some sheet metal on the inside, painted it black, and then insulation in between. So what happens is the sun's short waves go through the glass, heat up, and then become long waves, and they stay trapped inside the box, much like when you leave your car in the sun. 80% of all my cooked meals are done in this solar oven. Winter and in summer. With cooking sorted out, hot water system. A 52-year-old mechanic in Brazil came up with a, an idea to use clear plastic bottles and the long-life Tetra Packs, milk, fruit juice. These are very difficult to recycle. So what we're doing here, we're reusing the products. And then you, you fold it up into a certain shape, you paint it black, and then you put this on the inside, and so what you've got is little mini solar ovens, as I explained there. And you join them all up over some irrigation pipe, which is carrying the hot or, or the water. And this is your tank. And what happens is hot wants to rise. So the hot water goes through the top, collects at the top, enters the tank, and the cold sinks, and then it thermosiphons. That's a physics principle, all on its own, without any motor. And that's a system I installed at my home, and it's got 25 columns, because I've got a 120-litre system on the top of the roof. I was a bit worried about the neighbours, so I had to put this on the balcony. <laughs> but what happens when it's raining? My food gardens are very happy, but my solar systems are not going to be working. During World War II, people powered their vehicles with gasifiers. At the back of this vehicle, you've got a down gasifier, and you're basically taking biomass, wood chip, and you're extracting the hydrogen carbon monoxide, and then that goes into the carburetor and powers the vehicle. Using that same technology, 
We've got micro gasifiers and there's various designs. Here, I've taken an old coffee tin with a paint tin, certain number of holes because you want gasification to happen. You fill up your biomass inside the, the paint tin lid, you light it up, it looks initially like a normal open fire, but then after five minutes, the wood starts to gasify. Some very sexy chemical reactions are happening <laughs> in such waste products. And I'd say you use up to half the amount of wood that you would in a traditional open fire. So this is baby wood gas stove. He has mama wood gas stove, which is slightly bigger, five liter paint tin. And this is big daddy wood gas stove, <laughs> which uses an old 20 liter paint tin. You can cook, you use this outside, but what if you want to cook inside your lounge or in your little shack? I took an old 220 liter drum, cut off the top third, cut out a door with some hinges, and then you slide Big Daddy wood gas stove underneath and you light it up, you close, and then you've got a hot surface over here where you can cook your food and the gases go out of your lounge or your shack. I then also took a 100 litre drum, cut out a door. This is now a bigger one because I wanted to make a fireplace for my lounge and then did some measurements for an oven to put inside, and that's me measuring using the scrap steel. There's so much that can happen in these scrap steels. I get so excited when I see all this junk. <laughs> and my dog, my dog always likes to be with me when I'm tinkering, and uh, my marking pen decided he needed a new facelift, so he's got some new eyebrows. <laughs> Back to the fireplace. That's it inside the lounge, and so it heats up my space, and I cook my bread, bake lovely lasagnas. And that's the chimney going out the roof. Now, the heat exchanger. I took some copper pipe, and I put three, three together, and this now goes inside the chimney. And as the hot gases are going through, it heats up the water that's, going in, that's inside, and then it thermosiphons back into the tank. And that's it there, Big Daddy wood gas stove heating up my hot water when the solar systems are not effective because of a cloudy day. And there's an abundance of wood. This is prunings from one apricot tree in my garden. I'll be able to make many fires. The city parks workers are always pruning a huge man-made forest of Johannesburg. And you've got mountains of, of wood chip. When I run out, I use their wood chip. And I've shared my technology with various people and got ideas from various people. This is Nomsat, Denver Squatter Camp, who I found at uh, this food garden we were both volunteering at. She's an angel, and I like helping angels. And that's her 60-litre hot water system. She's also got her own fireplace in her shack with her big daddy wood gas stove. And that's the chimney going through her shack. That was quite a challenge to try and seal it. That's Albert, happy Albert, with one of his fireplaces, and that's him with his solar, uh, solar geyser system. Ruth, who had no hot water system, she was using kettles to shower, and I installed one of those for her with the donated geyser. I've done projects with school children, university students, workshops in rural areas, and that's disabled Ishmael, a boiler maker. That's his fireplace, and he did a better job than me. And I've done some work with the prison inmates as well. I stay in quite a fancy complex, people say, and I've implemented these technologies. My electricity bill used to be about 300, 400 rand a month. I know it's a bit low, and now it's about 100 rand a month. So it's more than halved. <laughs> okay. But the hardest part has been changing the way I live. That's been the hardest part. I adjust, I've adjusted my life to suit that of nature's. So I plan my meals, put them in the solar oven in the morning, go away in the evening, it's, it's cooked. My solar hot water systems, I shower in the evening instead of the morning because otherwise then I avoid having to make unnecessary heat exchanger fires 
or used electricity. And when I hold these sticks in my hand to fill up the wood gas stove, I'm just amazed. A nuclear reaction in the sun has happened, and those light waves reach us. And through the process of photosynthesis, causes trees to grow, and then I prune it. And so I've got stored energy from the sun in this little stick, which then is going to give me warmth and cook my food. I've had to be the change that I want to see in the world, as Gandhi put it. I'm also reminded of Hafiz, the 14th century poet, who once said, even after all this time, the sun has never said to the earth, you owe me. Imagine what a love like that can do. It lights up the whole world. I taste that light in the food cooked in my solar oven and the wood gas stove. I feel that light in the hot water that washes my body. And I see that light in the happy faces of the people that benefit from these systems. So I will continue to tinker with these low-tech sustainable solutions and extract less and less from this magical, precious, beautiful earth. <laughs>